Okay, so we are getting ready. She disappeared. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Your shirt matches the curtain, so I didn't. <laughs> Excellent. So we are going to welcome up Aubrey Blanche from Atlassian, and she is head of diversity and inclusion. And we're so excited to have you. Come on up. Test it. Oh, it works. That's cool. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Aubrey, um, and I'm at Atlassian, uh, where we're taking what I like to think of as a unique, but hopefully less unique in, in the future, approach to DNI, and um, which is driven by the fact that I'm a recovering social scientist. So we use data to do this, because it turns out that it's not impossible, it's just hard, but that's why we have science. So what I want to talk to you today about is to walk you quickly through a case study of how we actually fundamentally changed the balance of our graduate program with just a few tweaks to the way that we recruited and the way we thought about candidates and evaluating. Um, for this, because I have 10 minutes, I'll be focusing on women, um, but I'm happy to talk a little bit about the, the impact we've seen in, ter in terms of intersectional or other um, underrepresented groups. So first of all, this is a garbage question. Right? We've all heard this, like, oh, we want to do diversity, but we don't want to lower the bar. And my response to everyone is, no, I'm asking you to raise your standards. And that's really important because it turns out that's exactly what we did and exactly how we built a more balanced graduate program for our engineering um, and other technical roles. So what is Atlassian? Well, if you use Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, Sourcetree, FishEye, Stride, HipChat, we make all of that and more that I probably can't remember right now. But why do we care about DNI? Fundamentally, our mission is to unleash the potential in every team, and it turns out that teams are really diverse. <laughs> And research also shows that diverse and inclusive teams just perform better. And so we can't serve our customers, and we frankly can't sell them amazing solutions if we don't figure out how to do it inside first. So I want to talk a little bit about how we redesigned our recruiting funnel um, to create a balanced group of graduates. So when I came on board, I joined at the same time as our head of campus recruiting. We were so excited. We were going to get at least a quarter female engineers into, into the pipeline, and we were going to go. And we made a bunch of changes. So looking at the company that day, we had 11.5% women represented in technical roles. That was July 2015. And we were hiring, depending on the quarter, between about 10 and 12% women into those technical jobs. So for our graduate program, we decided to, to strengthen the evaluation process. So make sure that anyone who came to us was going to get a fair and objective evaluation. So we implemented a lot of best practices that have been empirically validated in, in the literature. That means we standardized interviews. So we made sure that everyone was being assessed against the same technical bar, right? Not rocket science, but it is important. We gave our interviewers unconscious bias training that was specifically designed to give them behavioral strategies that they could implement in order to be more objective evaluators themselves. We also helped them understand the way that they're, any evaluation they're going to do is subjective, so that they were able to be more conscious of that as they went through the process. And we got rid of the concept that I'm completely allergic to, which is culture fit. Um, which is actually just an intractable morass of unconscious bias. So if someone ever says, that person's not a culture fit, you respond with, tell me specifically what you mean by that. Because usually they're like, uh, they didn't row crew. And so, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, no offense to anyone who rode, cr rode crew. Sorry, my wife did, if that's better. Um, but right, so we have all of these weird biases about it. And so we actually got rid of culture fit. And we put in something called values fit. And thankfully, it's not just a rebranding. What we did was we looked at the types of behaviors that actually were common among the most successful Atlassians. And it turned out they were tied to our values. Things like people who have empathy for their colleagues and their customers, people who want to work in a transparent way, people who are willing to go out of their way to help the people around them. And so we designed an interview that specifically gets at those behaviors and whether that's how someone operates. And we also designed the interview to be agnostic to your background. 
So you can demonstrate initiative to help others in the context of a technical job, in helping your family, or maybe coaching your kid's soccer team. Because we want to make sure that you have the ability, not that you've gotten it in a particular way. So we were so excited. We built this amazing talent, and we opened up the job applications. Zero female applicants. And if you're like me, you're in Australia, so everyone's cursing, and they're like, shit, we have another problem. And so what we found was that actually our external branding was not attracting a balanced set of candidates in the first place. So we did something about it. We purchased a solution called Textio, which I strongly recommend, which helped us understand both whether we were using high impact language, but also whether we were using language that actually appealed to female candidates in the first place. Um, we also did things like got rid of degrees as requirements for entry level jobs, because it turns out really brilliant people sometimes don't get CS degrees, who would have thought? And we also overhauled our career site. So in addition to things like talking about our happy hours, we also talked about things like 401k matching, backup childcare, and the fact that we really care about people who want to work in a collaborative environment. We also switched out photos to make sure that anyone who came to our site would see themselves reflected in the Atlassians on the page. And we got a little bit late on that branding, and the first year that we implemented this whole thing, we got 17% women into our technical roles in our graduate program, which is almost 100% improvement over the year before, but still nothing to, to feel really fantastic about. So obviously, we made these changes, our careers page. Um, and this was our percentage of women in our um, graduate classes in 2017. So that's not 25%. And the thing that I love about this, especially, is that we were really clear with our hiring community. We want you to hire the right people. So the hiring community, without a quota, they didn't even know what our recruiting targets were. This is who they hired. And you can see this reflected in the way that it's changing our recruiting globally. So this year was the first year that we had a technical intern program in the US. And one third of our interns identified as black or Hispanic. Right. So it turns out the same process works for all axes of marginalization or diversity, um, which is cool because you, ne you only need to do something once. We've also seen a significant increase in the number of Atlassians who are joining us who are over 40, um, which is, again, another key demographic that isn't always given the same uh, things to succeed. But I hope you learned something from this, which is that it's not rocket science, it's totally possible, and these are things that you can absolutely implement at your company that will scale with you, right? So thank you so much uh, for hosting me, and if you have any questions, I'm super happy to answer them. Anyone ha thank you, Aubrey. Yeah. Anyone have questions? I was wondering if you had any thoughts on actually inclusion and maintaining those employees after you were able to get 57% rate, which is amazing and so exciting for an engineering program. Yeah. But I'd love to know what you're doing to actually keep those employees and make sure they don't leave. Totally. So one of the things that we heard um, internally looking both at sort of our team level diversity, so you can keep me honest, it's lastseen.com slash diversity if you want to check out our numbers. Um, we actually look at diversity at the team level, which is important because it actually helps us drive retention. So uh, the first team level report that we put out, we had 13.3% women in technical roles. But when I looked at all of my teams engaged in software development, 66% of them them had a female team member. And that tells me that those women were actually distributed pretty broadly. They were pretty isolated. Um, so we made a bunch of investments in programs that would help create cross-team community um, and sense of belonging. So uh, we did something that's called a coffee dates program, which is about as sophisticated as it sounds. Um, so you opt in, uh, and about every two weeks, you get assigned to have coffee with another woman in the office. There's no agenda. There's no expectation. It's just a way for you to create organic connections that may not happen in your day-to-day -day work. Um, we also have uh, mentoring rings, which are eight to 12 um, person peer mentoring initiatives that run for about six to 12 weeks, depending on um, that. We also have uh, what we call craft mentorship um, 
in a box. So for a particular specialty, uh, most recently it was architecture. Um, so women who didn't actually know what it was like to have a career path to be an architect, uh, our architects got together and actually um, did a phased mentoring program that helped them understand what that career path was. Um, and then on top of sort of ERGs and, and things that you see standard, for us, um, the thing that was a key driver of retention was just career growth. Um, and so we invested in a lot of professional development programs, in addition to things like our Emerging Leaders program, um, which we also try to build a balanced class in, again, so that everyone gets used to working in an environment with people who are different from them. Yeah. Maybe one more quick question. Hi, Aubrey. Hey. <laughs> so there's been a lot of talk lately about DNI programs not being successful, not yes. working. And you have shown a lot of results. Yeah. So, and I love value fit, by the way. Yes. It's fun. It's awesome. What are the other key components that have been successful about your program at Atlassian? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that I've really tried to do is actually empower people to create inclusion in their sphere of influence. So right, like I'm one person, um, and but creating space where people can solve challenges. I'll give you actually an example from today. I have an amazing engineer who just launched a new bot in Stride um, that if you install it in your room and you say, hey guys, it'll be like, did you mean folks? Did you mean pals? And I think that's actually one of the reasons we've been successful, which sounds weird because I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, but, but the idea that I can't solve all the problems and I don't even know all the problems that exist, but that we've created a community where you, when you put something forward like that to try it, people, like it's really excited. Like my whole leadership team downloaded it. My CEO put it in all of his rooms. And so I think it's that where we take this very like, let's test it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, oh well approach and we create that like it's okay to test and fail around inclusion um, that's really and I try to create spaces where people can have like a thoughtful and honest dialogue about it um, so I don't have to come up with the solutions myself yeah great awesome everyone let's thank Aubrey yeah thank you so much everyone